Hello. I'm very happy to see you here. With the implementation of Rollback Netcode, I'm sure you're eager to see what this wonderful game has to offer. My name is the Big Ol' Unit. Come with me as we embark on the life-changing journey that is Guilty Gear Exard Rev 2. Guilty Gear Exard Rev 2 is an anime fighting game that fills you with so much adrenaline that you would think that you're approaching cardiac arrest after drinking a singular bang energy. This game is the definition of style. You'll feel like Bruno Mars in a bar fight. In this game, winning is euphoric and losing is hilarious. At the end of the day, it's just plain fun. On this journey, we'll be discussing the basics of the game and its various systems so that you too can go into it with confidence. We'll be discussing the mechanics, online, resources, mods, and some tips and tricks as well as which version of the game to buy. First on the chopping block, violence. Gatlings are the way each character cancels one move into another. Usually, there's an order that depends on a move's power. That order is punch, kick, slash, heavy slash, and dust. Dust is the universal overhead as well as the universal sweep to knock down a character. You can hold a direction after the overhead for a guaranteed beating. The Gatling system applies to some characters more than others, but every character shares the pain equally. However, everyone knows that where there is violence, there is also <laughs> fear. A wise man once said, I didn't pay $60 just to block. Don't listen to them, you are a semi-functional homo sapien, you can learn to hold the back button. There are three different types of blocking that you need to know. The first one is a standard block. By holding down or down back on the ground, you can block high and low. However, when doing a regular block, you take chip damage that eats away your health from each hit you take. To avoid taking chip, you can use the second form of blocking, Faultless Defense, or FD. You can FD by holding two buttons together except dust while holding back. Doing this will consume your meter continuously. You can normal block projectiles in the air, but in order to block a physical move, you need to FD. FD also pushes the opponent back as a sort of get off me tool. However, it gives each move blocked by FD more plus frame. The third one that makes you feel like Neo is Instant Block, or IB. This is basically the opposite of FD. If you time pressing back with the opponent's move hitting you, their move becomes more punishable and the pushback is lowered so you can hit them with what they rightfully deserve for thinking that they can scuff your J's like it's nothing. On the topic of blocking and fear, if you look at this spot on the screen, you can see a meter building up as you block. This is the fear meter, also known as risk, which for me, it stands for regretting that I supported cowardice. If you get hit with risk, the moves that follow are unscaled until the bar is empty. When the meter gets to a certain point, it starts flashing. When this flashing happens, the next hit is a forced counter hit. This means big damage, or potential, oh god that health bar is going down a little fast, itis. It will help you a great deal to learn that I-Beam builds more risk and FD stops risk from building. Here we see the wild soul man, desperately attempting to open up his opponent. Little did he know that his opponent memorized the entire script of Kung Fu Panda and therefore cannot be opened up by traditional means. In times like this, the soul main only has one option. In order to claim his prey, he is forced to get up close and personal. Watch out! 
Yes, we're putting a grab section in here because many people fail to understand just how quickly the momentum can shift in a match off just one grab. It can put you back in the corner. It can make sure that you don't escape. And it can shake you mentally in the right circumstances. Such as stealing the soul of the helpless by grabbing their burst. Burst being a get off me tool that builds in this meter right here. Grabs in this game are frame one and not tied to a standalone grab button. In this game, you grab by using the heavy slash button, and you can grab both on the ground and in the air. This means that for some characters, even if you try to bait their throw, they can still get their turn back. They quite literally woke up and chose violence. Overall, throws are terrifying and learning the right situations to throw is a very good thing in the long run. Now that we know our RPS, let's turn that into fifth dimensional chess with this one little meter down here. Almost every fighting game out there has a meter of some variation, and Exerd is no different. The tension gauge is your gateway drug into the cocaine canyon that is Exerd and its nuances. You build tension by moving forward and oppressing the opponents for their bad opinions on the matchup. Since this game supports offense over many things, it has a built-in anti-turtling mechanic called a negative penalty. If you walk back for a certain amount of time, the IRS will notify you that you need to pay your taxes. After promptly ignoring them, they will be thorough in taking all that you have. You want to be sure that you have plenty of cash saved, because you're going to be throwing that paper towards a vast menu of options. The main dish being Roman Cancel. Roman Cancel is a mechanic that slows down time for a few seconds. This is done when hitting three of the face buttons except dust and can be done at any time. There are three flavors to choose from. Mild, medium, and spicy. Mild can be performed while in neutral or during the startup of any move. You can use this to stop a commitment you've made in neutral, react to a counter poke, gain a better position, the list really goes on. It especially helps that mild is the cheapest of the sauces, only costing 25 meter, as opposed to the others costing 50. This is shown with the lines in the gauge. Medium is done when you're in recovery frames for a move. This is good for when you throw out a counter poke or a poke and proceed to go. The spicy Roman cancel is the biggest beast of all. This is integral in most of the moves you'll make. You can use it to extend combos and continue pressure. This one action can change whether a combo will kill or not. Roman Cancel, while simple on paper, is what pushes Guilty Gear as a unique franchise with an intimidating amount of freedom of expression. RC isn't the only option to use your meter on, though. For just 50 pesos, you can perform an overdrive. These are your supers. Some have more utility, some do more damage, and some are installs that change certain properties of the character. You can spend your burst to do a version of your cinematic super that's basically a nuke in the fact that it does more damage and it scales less. You have to sell your house to do it, but it sends a powerful message. You also have a couple of useful social anxiety tools, these being Blitz and Dead Angle. Blitz is a reject guard that has the character build a shield and perform a Blitz attack. This is done by pressing and holding any button that isn't dust, plus heavy slash. It becomes plus a fully charged, and crumples the opponent on hit. 
It also steals a small amount of their burst gauge and gives you a little bit of burst for each hit rejected. You can choose to not do the attack and just do the reject by tapping the input instead of holding for the attack. There's a high and low version as well as an air version. It costs 25 meter. It can't be done while blocking. It can be grabbed. And you can't hold a direction to do it. Dead Angle is a push that you can do while in block stun for 50 meter. If it hits, it pushes your opponent across the screen and knocks them down. Both of these actions can be baited, but they're useful to throw out every now and then. And that sums up all of the system mechanics of Exert. Now we- Oh wow, I um, uh, wasn't expecting this. Just uh, give me a second, will you? Hello? What? I forgot. What do you mean I- Oh wow, I did forget! Huh. Well, thank you for that. You actually had really good timing. Okay, thank you. Bye. Well, we actually forgot about one thing. I need to tell you about- Three, two, one, go! go. There is a 30% chance that when a clash occurs, the game will freeze and go into danger time. When it's triggered, the game will freeze and a 3 second countdown will appear on the screen before you're able to move again. After that, you can cancel into FD to stay safe, or another move to try and hit the opponent. Danger time lasts 10 seconds, and during this time any stray hit becomes a mortal counter. Getting a mortal counter allows for you to cancel the starter into anything. Even if you hit the opponent with a special move, you can cancel into another special move. You should take the 3 second countdown to consider what move you want to make. Congratulations! You've graduated from game journalist to jobless gamer. You can now bring this newfound knowledge and skill into online. Before opening up online, you may need to change some of your graphical settings in order for the game to stay responsive and smooth. The first thing you see when you click online are Ranked, Public Lobby, and Player Match. For those watching this video who are brand new, I would recommend going to the Public Lobbies, just to get a feel for the game and to try and apply what you've learned to start developing a playstyle. You could even go in there to try new characters that you might be interested in. While in the public lobbies, you can play against anyone at one of the many cabinets scattered around the room, enjoy a serene fishing experience to get new items, find little treasure chests that contain even more items. You can sit in the shade at a luxurious rest area, and you can even have a nice conversation with... For those who wish to take a deeper dive into certain matchups, wish to play with their friends, or want to play in online tournaments, Player Match is where you want to go. These rooms can hold up to 8 players at once and have 4 cabinets inside them. You can filter your settings while searching for a room to get a desired lobby type. When you're given the list of available lobbies, the main thing to look out for are the player list, the connection quality, and the rotation type. If there is a lock next to the lobby name, that means it is password protected. If the connection quality box is red, that means your connection does not meet the requirement that has been set for that specific room. The main two rotation types you'll find are winner stays, where you'll get booted back to the lobby after a match and the next person in line takes the loser's spot, and rematch, where at the end of a match two small menus will pop up, giving you the option to immediately rematch the opponent. Other things you can do inside of the player lobbies are going into training mode, accessing the room menu where you have an assortment of things to view and edit, and become the best there ever was at Lobby Soccer! If you find someone you want to play with in the future, you can go to the members list, click on their name, click view player profile, and it will take you to their Steam page where you can friend them. If you wish to host your own lobby, you can set your own settings and give the room either a password, or, after clicking create room, click on specific to give the room a search ID. The room will not show up to those searching unless they type in the search ID in their search settings. When closing the lobby, 
It's common for hosts to click Announce the room is closing to let people finish their matches before leaving. You notice that I haven't mentioned ranked yet. This is because most players will just avoid this mode. Not that the mode is bad, most players tend to prefer the lobbies. Also, rank just doesn't matter. You don't get anything special from it, it's best of 5 rounds, best of 3 games, then you hop back into queue. That's that, we're moving on. This final section will cover a few nuances of the quality of life surrounding Exert. I'm gonna go through these pretty quick since Sharon is waiting for me at home, and I don't want to keep the missus waiting. So... <gasps> in the main menu, there is a section dedicated to missions where you can learn general tactics and certain matchup info. You have to press a button in the air in order to air tech, so mashing is a good thing to do while being comboed. The game shows you that you missed a tech opportunity when the combo counter goes black, and the number from before it turns black appears underneath. When air teching, you can go either forward or back if you hold either direction, or stay in place if you don't hold a direction. Guts is a mechanic where the lower the health bar, the less damage you take. Some characters have more guts than others, so they will die quicker. Everyone in the game has 420 health, nice, but Guts is what makes characters feel fatter or scrawnier. Stun is an invisible meter that grows whenever you get hit. You gain more stun when you get counter hit and the meter gradually goes down when you aren't getting hit. When the meter reaches full, you get stunned and are unable to move for a period of time. Trying to roman cancel a whiff DP will show you a big red X, and the roman cancel will not occur. This does not apply for a whiffed command grab though. The amount of time a character takes to get up varies from character to character. There are also two different kinds of knockdown for each character, face up and face down. These wake up times also differ on each character. This is important to know when applying OP to your opponent. Hey, hey, for all the gotcha gamers out there, you can collect characters, poses, colors, and expressions from fishing to use in digital figure mode, but you didn't hear it from me. You can also get system voices from fishing that change the announcer's voice to whatever character you have a system voice for. You can coach players while spectating by typing in a comment that will slide along the screen while the game is going on. Both players will see this and it's really funny. And that about sums up the things you need to know about the game as a whole. You can take this information and go at whatever pace you want to. At the end of the day, it's all about your experience and having fun with it. If you end up liking the game so much that you really want to commit to learning it and playing it at a competitive level, there are many resources that'll help you in that process. The ones that you're basically required to look at are Dustloop and Keep On Rockin'. Dustloop is a website that goes into depth on each character's playstyles and frame data and also lists basic combos. Keep On Rockin' is a website where you can search up a specific character or a notable player's name and find multiple links to their match footage. This helps with finding out how a matchup looks at a higher level, and it also helps with learning game sense. If you want advice about your character, there are Discord servers dedicated to each character in Exert and include channels discussing the matchups for every other character in the game. Some mods that are able to help in the learning process are the Wake Up Tool, Lab Tool, and the Hitbox Hurtbox mod. There are dedicated videos on how to install and use each that will be linked below. There's also a list of content creators that make really helpful videos in the description as well. Exert is a game that has touched the hearts of many passionate players, myself included. The characters, the music, and the style of the game all just show how much love and support went into it over the years. Rollback being added shows this and has made the community grow exponentially. I hope this video has made you interested to dive in, and I hope that Exert touches your heart just as it has with others. Whether you want to just be another part of the community, or even want to make your own scene on or offline, you'll find many people who will openly support and help you. Thank you for sticking with me on this journey for so long. Now go out, make some memories, and play some Guilty Gear. I'll be busy eating glue while you do so.